welcome back to day four, video two of Books and Breakfast Book Club. So I hope you guys have been enjoying reading Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. I know I have, I really love this book. So we're gonna be making donut apples today. So I hope you guys are hungry. Again, if you guys want, you can choose any breakfast option you'd like. So Michelle and I are gonna head into the kitchen again. We're gonna whip that up and then we'll be right back to read Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. We're gonna start reading from chapter 43. All right, we'll be right back. Hi everyone, this is Michelle. I'm going to tell you what you'll need to make donut apples. First, your ingredients are three apples. Then you can pick between one third cup of almond butter or one third cup of yogurt. Here are some optional toppings, small strawberry slices, sprinkles, granola, chocolate chips, then you'll need a plate, knife, and a spoon to make your donut apples. Enjoy. So welcome back. I hope you guys are enjoying your breakfast and go ahead and just relax and listen to a few chapters from Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. All right, so I'm gonna start with chapter 43. Up bright and early the next morning, Kyle made his way across the rotunda reading room. It was 815. The Dewey Decimal Doors would open in one hour and 45 minutes. The game would be over in less than four hours. Kyle was totally pumped. Sierra Russell, on the other hand, was sitting in a comfy chair reading a book. Hey, said Kyle. Oh, hi, said Sierra, stifling a small yawn. Did you stay up all night reading? No, I went upstairs around two, but there was a new stack of books on the librarian's desk when I came down. Oh, really? What'd you find? Five copies of this. She showed Kyle her book. It was the 11th hour, a curious mystery. It's a rhyming picture book about Horace the Elephant's 11th birthday party and the search to find out who ran off with all the food. There are hidden messages and cryptic codes all over the pages. Why is it called the 11th hour? 
The birthday feast was supposed to take place at 11 a.m., but since somebody stole all the food, <laughs> Kyle laughed. 11 a.m. What? The 11th hour, the last possible moment. Kyle nudged his head up at the Wonder Dome. How much do you want to bet that at 11 o'clock on the dot, the clue we need most of all will pop up in the 300 section? Sierra smiled. So this new book is a clue about our clue? That's my guess. Did you eat breakfast? Not yet. Well, what are you waiting for? Said Miguel as he strode into the room. Today's the big day. We're gonna need our energy for the, for the final sprint. He's right, said Akimi, climbing down the spiral, spiral staircase. The doors open in less than two hours. Then we only have two more hours to figure everything out. But, said Kyle to his other teammates, Sierra just figured out when we'll get the big 300s clue. He gestured toward the picture book at the last possible minute. What, said Akimi, 1159? Close, 11 o'clock. Awesome, said Miguel. It must be a very good clue. Kyle and his team went into the cafe where they found Haley Daly seated at a table eating half a grapefruit and staring blankly through the glass walls into the rotunda. Hey Haley, said Kyle, how's it going? Not bad, you? Good, win or lose, we're having a blast. Where are the fun bunch, said Akimi. You guys really get along, huh? Oh yes, said Sierra. I haven't had this much fun since I was six. Seriously? What's the matter, Haley? said Akimi. Life not so good on Team Charles? It's okay, I guess. I mean, we've pulled together some good clues and all. Well, said Miguel, if you ever want to switch sides, we're always looking for new members. Can I do that? Just switch sides? Even though I know everything about what Team Charles did all day yesterday? I think so, said Kyle. I mean, there was nothing in the rules about teams. Huh, said Haley. And Andrews teamed up with you guys too? No, said Kyle. Haley nodded toward the wall of windows behind Kyle. Then why'd he just swipe his library card and go into your meeting room? Chapter 44. Zipping across the slick marble floor, Kyle and his team trailed by Haley practically slid into community meeting room B, where Andrew Peckelman stood with a notepad jotting down everything that was written on the whiteboard walls. Hey, shouted Akimi. That's cheating. Andrew spun around. His eyes were the size of tennis balls behind his goggle glasses. Uh, 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 he sputtered. You guys left the door open. No, we did not, said Kyle extremely calmly, especially considering how much he wanted to throttle Peckelman. It locks automatically, I checked. And I double checked the door before we went to bed, said Miguel. Kyle was surprised to hear it. You did? You bet, bro. It's what teammates do. And they knocked knuckles. Well, you don't have anything but a stupid list of stupid books and stupid authors and a stupid Bible verse. A verse which boomed in Mr. Lemoncello, whose face had just appeared on the video screen wall. You would do to well memorize, Mr. Peckelman. Thou shalt not steal. Mr. Lemoncello was dressed in a curled white wig and a long black robe. He looked like a judge in England. He slammed down a rubber gravel on his desk. It made a noise like a whoopee cushion. 
Will everyone kindly join me in the rotunda reading room at once? Everybody shuffled out of the meeting room and into the rotunda. They were shocked to see that Mr. Lemoncello himself was seated behind the librarian's desk at the center of the circular room. This was no hologram. This was the real deal. Charles, all smiles, made a grand entrance, slowly descending one of the spiral staircases. Good morning, everybody, he called out cheerfully. What's all the excitement? Did I miss something? Just your man, Andrew, trying to cheat, said Miguel. What? Oh, good morning, Mr. Limoncello. I didn't expect to find you here inside the library. Isn't today your birthday, sir? Yes, Charles. And there's no place I'd rather be on my big day than inside a library surrounded by books. Unless, of course, I could be on a bridge to Terabithia. Well, sir, I must say you're certainly looking fit and trim. Have you been working out? No, Charles, today I will be working in. I beg your pardon? Today I will be working here inside the library, supervising the final hours of this competition. Oh, I don't think it will take hours, sir, said Charles. Not to brag, but I suspect some of us will be going home very soon. You are correct. For instance, Mr. Peckleman. He will be leaving right now. What? whined Peckleman. Why? Because you cheated. You tried to steal the other team's hard earned information. Peckleman's eyes darted back and forth. It wasn't my fault, it was Charles's idea. He whipped up his arm and waggled his finger. Charles, Charles told me to do it. He made me do it. Mr. Peckleman, please approach the bench, which in this instance is actually a desk. Let me see the library card you use to gain access to community meeting room B. Somewhat reluctantly, Andrew handed it over. Is your name Sierra Russell? No, sir, Andrew said to his shoes. He stole my card, said Sierra, and she opened her latest book and pulled out the library card bookmark. Whose card do you have, Sierra? asked Charles. Andrew Peckleman's. Aha, said Charles. He pulled the old switcheroo, eh? Because you told me to, said Peckleman. Really, said Charles, sniggering. How dare you make such a scandalous accusation? Do you have any proof? I don't need any stupid proof. You bullied me into stealing Sierra's card. Mr. Lemoncello banged his gravel again. And thus ends the story of Andrew and the horrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, Mrs. Bunny. A hologram of the old lady bunny from Goodnight Moon hopped on top of the librarian's desk. Good night, Andrew, said the bunny. Your time with us is all through. Clarence and Clement, the security guards, appeared and escorted Peckleman out of the building. Sir, said Sierra, would you like Andrew's library card for the discard pile? No, thank you. That card is now property of Team Kyle. Haley Daly raised her hand. Yes, Haley? Kyle saw her shoot a withering glance at Charles. How may I help you, dear? asked Mr. Lemoncello. Well, sir, if it's okay with you, I'd like to switch sides. I want to join Kyle Keeley's team. All right, so that's all I'm gonna read for today and you guys can read the rest on your own. Stick around, I'm gonna talk about some book discussion questions that you guys can have and some more fun activities that you guys can do together at home as a family. 
Okay, so today's family discussion topic is all about holograms. Gather together and ask each other these questions. Would seeing a hologram make you nervous? Or would you think it was cool? Why? Where and for what purposes would holograms be useful? You can let me know your thoughts by sending your comments to me on Remind. Okay, now let's play Decode the Secret Message game. So after I explain the game, you're going to want to pause here on this screen. As you can see, each letter has a picture below it. That picture will represent the letter. Below you have the secret message. So gather your family and work together to decode each letter to uncover the message. Once you know what that secret message is, be ready with it for Friday's Zoom session. All right, have fun with this and pause the video here. All right, so I will see you guys tomorrow on Zoom for some fun games and for some great conversations about the book Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. So see you guys tomorrow. Bye.